Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and I have a little bit of a confession to make. I have just finished up my Baldur's Gate uh, Let's Play. I was supposed to record some more for Morrowind and for Pillars of Eternity, and yesterday, instead of doing that, I played this game. Now, I got this recently in a Humble Bundle. Uh, it was an RPG bundle. Uh, it's available on Steam and through a number of other stores. I will put links in the description below. But what this is, for those who don't know is a uh, pinball-based role-playing game. Now, it's got a campaign mode, and the campaign mode isn't terribly long. It took me about a day to finish, and that's because I'm pretty shit at, uh, at uh, pinball. But it was surprisingly, almost disturbingly fun. And it's put out by Atlas. So if you're familiar with Atlas, or it's published by Atlas, so if you're familiar with Atlas's uh, selection of role-playing games, they always put out really quirky shit that's really fun. So this, if I'd known it was put out by Atlas, I would have played it a while back. Uh, it has a campaign mode, which is basically a role-playing game style mode, uh, and then it's got this arena mode, which is... gonna. I'm going to use this to show you the gameplay. Now... It's got a map, and each map is a game board, like so. Uh, you get an objective, and usually in the game there's like story objectives. Uh, and then, as you can see, over on the right-hand side, you've got your party. Now, you start out with just the thief. I've finished the campaign mode, so you're going to see quite a few in here. Uh, I'm not going to do a full Let's Play of this because, let's face it, I'm terrible at pinball. Uh, but this is just to show you what's going on. Now, you have... Uh, as you can see, you've got enemies on the screen. Uh, you select your characters, uh, and then you, the character is the ball. And each one has special abilities and a certain uh, certain way to do things. I really recommend, if you're going to play this, to play this with... Oh, see, see, I suck at this game. To play this with a uh, Xbox controller or something similar uh, for your... You know, for your PC, I believe it's also a tablet game. Not a hundred percent on that. Um, as you can see, your enemies are basically the equivalent of little bumpers. You have flippers all over. Your main flippers, if you noticed, they were firing. Uh, they were firing arrows at the flippers earlier. Those flippers can be damaged, and they get shorter as they're damaged. Uh, now, each ball has a special ability. The one I'm using right now is the healer ball. The healer ball does minimal damage, but gains uh, mana from various things. And once you get her, you can revive your other balls. Now, even though she looks like a warrior, the one I've got selected right now, uh, she's the rogue. You start with her. I've completed the campaign. You get some sort of epic shit, and she's wearing that now. Uh, now, uh, as you can see, you can switch characters and root. Oh, crap. Hold on. Yeah, that was totally my fault. As you, you can switch characters en route, you can modify the course of the ball by hitting left and right. And how much you can modify it depends on the character's equipped agility. The rogue has a lot of agility. Uh, you know, the let's go with a knight. The knight has shit for agility, but he's really rough. As you can see, he's a bigger ball. He's a heavier ball. He does more damage when he hits shit. And he's overall pretty powerful, just for slugging through shit. He's really great at breaking shit, too. And he knocks people down, which is just hilarious. As you can see, he can't actually go uphill. The rogue can. Now, you can only switch characters when you've got it parked on a bumper. Which means if you... Or if, if you're in the... If you're still in the, uh, in the, in the, the shooter up there, or if you're parked here, you can switch between characters. I've got a healer, a uh, hunter... A swordsman, which does a lot of damage uh, straight up. A, a crone, which is kind of like a wizard. you got a barmaid, which is a hireling. You can actually hire some of these guys. The rest you get through quests. The rogue, and then back to the knight. Um, now I'm going to show you the knight's special ability. Uh, the knight has two special abilities. Uh, the first one is a shield special ability. And the second one is later on in the game, way later on in the game, you get a squire. And the squire is basically a second ball. Now you can't control how the like you know I said you can control whether whether the ball goes left and right. You can't control your multi-ball characters, and the squire is a multi-ball. Uh, using a special ability requires mana. Fuck, I fucked it up. Well, I got enough to revive. So does reviving, by the way. 
Uh, you can see in the lower right hand corner the blue the blue fucking A, I suck at this game. The blue bar down at the bottom I almost lost it again. The blue bar at the bottom will show you uh, how much mana you've got. And uh, basically as you fill it you can use special abilities. Uh, she, the, the healer's special ability is between all of them. In other words, you don't have to have her selected. But as you can see here, he's got two special abilities. One, he's got enough mana to summon a wolf. And then he's got, it only takes a little bit of mana to summon some, uh, some falcons. Uh, the healer, yeah, I already went through the healer. The knight has one special ability that kind of does both. His shield special ability basically puts a shield down in the gutter so you can't, you know, you can go down in the gutter and not die immediately. Um, in fact, you don't take damage in this game. You, you you only lose by going down into the gutter, and you only do that if you're not actu if you're actually got enemies on the board. Um, I'm using it. You know, I'm just gonna suck at this because I'm, I'm I'm explaining during during a timed mode. Uh, as you can see, he's got full life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom board. This is all one continuous board, and I will go ahead and summon his squire. Now, as you can see at the bottom, that skull turned into a shield, which means while that shield's up, I can't actually go in the gutter. See, I just passed the gutter there. It only lasts for a certain amount of time, and it's got a countdown timer on it. Well, here we go. And you get gold with which you can buy equipment. Now, you can only buy equipment, I believe you can only buy equipment in campaign mode. So let's go to the main menu, and I'm going to hit campaign mode real quick. Because I want to see if I can upgrade my people any. Uh, let's go to continue campaign. The port is where you purchase things. <sighs> Each, in, you know, these are your main quest people. And these are your hirelings. I haven't got all the hirelings. You can tell I've only got the barmaid. Uh, and it's limited based on party level. You get party level up by playing. And I believe it all lumps into one thing. Uh, yeah, you see my controller. It all lumps into one stat thing. Uh, so, you know, you can purchase additional characters over here. Yeah, I, I just refused them. Uh, each of these has their own special abilities. Now, the swordsman's special ability is that he can set people on fire. He does a fair amount of damage. He's almost as maneuverable as the rogue, but not quite. And you can buy equipment for him that basically boosts what they do. Uh, you can swap between all the characters. I, I do not have the crone upgraded at all. She is really rough to use. The barmaid is fun. She's a melee fighter. Kind of as useful as the knight. But she can stun people when she hits them. Furthermore, she can throw spoons at them when they're, when she's nearby. So, you know, that, there's that. Uh, the rogue does a fair amount of damage when she's attacking from behind. In other words, when she's coming from the top and falling down on people. She's a, the most agile person in the game. She can summon her little dog, which is a multi-ball, which is real fun. And you start with her, which says for a lot. So, uh, you know, she's good. Now the knight, the squire, I've got him mostly upgraded. Uh, huh, additional melee damage. Okay, anyway... Uh, yeah, Knight, as I said, bulls through things. The healer gathers mana real quick, and she can raise your people. Furthermore, when she's gathering mana, she repairs the flippers at the bottom. So, the main flippers. So, if, you're fli if your flippers are taking a, taking a beating from shit, because they can be hit with bombs and all, all that, and, and spells and that kind of thing, she's the one that you switch to to repair shit. Uh, Hunter, I don't use a whole lot. He's relatively quick. He's almost as quick as a thief. His attacks are shit. But he's got the most multi-ball abilities out of everybody. Furthermore, um, his multi-balls act a little bit differently. They don't just act like pinballs. They actually cling to shit and start hitting them a couple times. But his damage is just shit. I mean, he's also got a ranged attack, so there is that. He can do a fair amount of damage if you're like in close quarters. You've got multiple multi-balls out, and he's firing his close range at him. Uh, I don't use him a lot. Uh, yeah, I think that's everybody. Everybody that I've got. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna take whatever higher hands I can. One for every three levels, I can get a second hired hand. Um, do you want the monk, the alchemist, or the farm boy? Let's get the farm boy. He is just a pretty decent hitter. 
There you go. And you get these little cut scenes where they talk to one another. See, as you can see, you got your stats right there. High defense, he's a large ball like the knight. Medium damage, melee, medium maneuverability, agility, passive ability, momentum, it's a knockdown. So he's like a miniature version of the knight. Uh, I think he can actually do more, though. And we will buy him some upgrades. We'll buy him a lot of upgrades. In fact, I'm just going to go across here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? The conversation in this game is hilarious. Swing both ways. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should have looked what these actually do. Instead, I'm just upgrading at, ram at random. And, um, as, you know, as you can tell, you go back to the game and you earn some more... You earn some more... Uh, some more uh, blah, blah, blah. You earn some more gold and some more experience towards the party. The individual characters don't earn experience, um, but the party as a whole does. As you can see, I've unlocked the entire map because I finished the campaign. Uh, and you can go back at any time and play through levels that you've done before. And some of them are pretty typical pinball, and some of them are like bonus levels, and some of them are like boss fights, like the blacksmith. Let's go ahead and do the blacksmith to collect more loot. Uh, it looks like I've already finished. You know, I've, I've killed the blacksmith. That's funny. I haven't done this before. When you return to a boss, apparently he's already dead, and he's got the chalk outline on the floor. But they give you somebody to take his stead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this little ability here. His hammer gives you mana. Various items in in the in the background give you your your mana. Usually light sources give you mana, campfires give you mana, but like in this one, the uh, the anvil gives you mana. I'm gonna go ahead and pop our squire in there. Now, when you're switching characters, only the main flippers work to switch with. As you can tell, I'm pretty shit here. And there goes my squire, but I've already got enough mana to summon another one. See? This guy's defending because he's got a shield and heavy armor. Boom! But he can't defend from behind, can he? Come on! Fuck. Yeah, I keep that shield up. That's why the knight is so good. I should have used him more in the main campaign. I didn't use him nearly enough. Also, you'll note the squire is small enough that he can actually fall down even with that... Even with that shield in place. There we go. And you get the option to progress to the next level. So that is the gameplay in a nutshell. It gets really difficult towards the end. It took me several tries to get past the last few boards. Uh, and then you can play basically, you know forever. Now there's only a limited number of boards. So it's got a very limited amount of replay value in this. You've got I don't, I don't know how many boards. Um, some of them are linked, etc, etc. I will head back to the main and uh, yeah, go to options, head back to the main menu. I'm going to play one more one more thing here. I'm going to go ahead and hit one of the arena boards. Uh, and just show you, you've got, uh, uh, I need to go over there. How do I do this? I want to see, like, you've got, uh, supposedly there's a friend, or you can use the mouse on it. There's a friend leaderboard, I'm the only one of my friends that has this. Uh, you got a global leader leaderboard, which shows you everybody's abilities. And, yeah, there's apparently, there's not that many people. If I can get that much, there's not that many people playing there. All right, but overall a fun game. I got it as part of a parcel. If you see it on sale, I don't know if it's worth the full price, but if you see it on sale or if you, or, blah, 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 blah. but if you see it on sale or if you really like pinball games, then I believe it's worth a shot. I mean, it gave me about a day, day and a half worth of amusement. I thought it was genuinely fun. Storyline won't win any awards, but it was a real feel-good storyline. Oh, I've done this already. God damn it! That's all right. Ah, and I'll show you some, some more gameplay. And these guys come out in waves. You know, this one is a little bit different from the others. You can see I've got three three gutters, basically. Uh, so i got to watch all of them. But those two on the sides, they've got big... Uh, they got big bricks in front of them, so I don't have, or crates in front of them, so I have to worry about that just yet. Now the knight is always fun to use, but he busts through those things like crazy, so I need to watch how much I use them here. 
Uh, and you can barely control the knight. That's the only problem I have with him. His maneuverability sucks. You can see I can curve... Uh, can curve his trajectory a bit. Oh, I switched. My bad. Yeah, that's another thing. If you're playing with a controller, uh, you can accidentally switch real easy. Now, playing with a rogue with all her epic shit is probably kind of cheating, borderline. As you can see, I kind of stuck there. Yeah, the rogue can just basically run up walls and shit. Let's get her dog out. Now, that other ball is her dog. That's a multi-ball. Oh, I almost died there. And, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of... Oh, crap. Yeah, you can, you can adjust it to kind of balance on them. All right. Well, there's, it's asking me to go up there. Let's see if I can't go up there. All right. Boom. Oh, fuck. There we go. And I get to another map. And yeah, and some maps link like that. Oh, god damn it. Right, let's go over here. Agility is like the best upgrade, like, ever. Especially with a rogue. See, it, 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 I think, I don't know if it doubles your agility or what, but... You basically get the full, you know, you can bounce around the, bounce around like a guided missile with a rogue. Now, when you see then, when I'm hitting these bats and you see minus 75, it's taking off my mana. So if you see bats, you want to use the hunter because he's immune to that shit. He can basically bounce around up here and kill everything for free. Now I've fired off of his, uh, his, there's his eagles or his falcons. He's got a multi-ball with the Falcons. Oh, god damn it, I immediately fall down. Back to the beginning. Alright. His Falcons come up here with him. And I'm up here again. Let's go back up to the top. This is the top when I was here before. Um, I kept falling because basically it's rough. That window, that exit, see, it goes you back down to the bottom. God damn it. Not a problem. We'll just run across again. We'll just run across again. Oh, crap. God damn it. Get my way, bats. No. Pests are like the worst thing ever. Like, I, I think only the, the second to final boss in this game annoyed me more, more than, those, uh, than those pests. And pests can be rats or bats or the whole works, you know? No, I don't want to go out. I want to get that key. Because when you get... Fuck. When you get the key, is it on... See that treasure chest in the corner? It uh, The key will unlock that. Oh, I can't even get over there, is this guy. Now, you'll see how my flippers are, are wounded. Uh, let me get some mana as as the healer. Now, now, she gets mana from hitting people, but she also gets mana for clearing shit like that. And you see how the flippers are regrowing. There we go. They're fully regrown. Now I can switch back. That's not who I want. Well, who I want to get this time is going to be the rogue. See, I broke that. I broke that barrel over there. So now, if I ever go down there, that's not who I wanted. God damn. Yeah, the the barmaid is hilarious with her uh, with her with her little commentary. Boom. Come on, I want to get over there where the arrow is. No, I suck at this game. You can see she's stunning people left and right when she hits them. She doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but she does more than a lot. So, um, here we go. Back to my ranger. Or to my hunter. Yeah, just uh, get past there, man. That's all I'm asking you to do is get over there. Come on. There we go. And uh, you get to watch me suck at this for a little bit more. Ah, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the rogue because she can just jump up there. Ah, all the way back down the bottom. But you see the treasure chest is now open. As soon as I, I need to get that treasure chest mostly to build my... Uh, God damn it. Yeah. Ah, those bats keep getting in the way. I need to get that treasure chest because as you can see I've got a lot of shit to upgrade. Ah, gold charm doubles the gold that you get. And so you see I got 4,000 from that treasure chest. Uh, parties losing 100 gold. I don't necessarily know if that treasure chest uh, actually counted. If I've got 4,000 when I go back to the port, then it counted. We're going to see about that. I've long gone past 
past my initial intent on this. Uh, you know, I've I'm, I got involved with this. You could, it's a fun game. It's it's more fun than I thought. Okay, it didn't give me the four thousand. Fuck. You only get the gold when you're in the campaign mode. If you replay the campaign mode and got that treasure chest, I would have got four thousand gold. Since I was just doing the arena, I only got like three hundred and sixty-nine. So that was Rollers of the Realms. I'm not going to show. I'm not going to do a full let's play because uh, it's going it, to. You would be basically me cussing at the machine. And plus, I think I fucked me. I'm using the shoulder buttons of the, my uh, my 360 controller, so. Uh, uh, it, it makes it it's better than the keyboard to use it and it's, it, it allowed me to be a little bit better than I thought but I think I'm wearing, wearing the shoulder pads out on, on uh, the shoulder buttons out on my, on my 360 controller now I am going to be filming some more Morrowind tonight and I will try to get some more Pillars of Eternity out now that I've got my now I'm back down to two it's going to let me focus on those two uh, you know two main playthroughs it's going to let me focus on those two more so you can expect to see more of those coming up uh, and you know I'll do a couple couple little interesting things like this in between now that I'm back down to just two so this has been the RPG crawler if you like what you've seen remember to like comment and subscribe for more role playing games in general until next time take care and goodbye <laughs>